Hi guys, and welcome to the Stephen King Cemetery Club. Hi guys, we are talking about The Monkey, which is one of my favorite short stories from this collection, and it is the illustration on the book cover. Now, this is almost like an urban legend type thing. It's got a, a creepy kind of possessed object and it wreaks havoc and it cannot be gotten rid of. And I love that element of horror attached to a child's toy. We open our story with Hal Shelburne. He is the father of Dennis and Petey. He is married to Terry. They are in an attic cleaning out some possessions of his aunt, Ida. His aunt, Ida, and Uncle Will raised him after his mother died. She had an accident when he and his brother, Bill, were very young. And ever since, he's kind of thought of, of Ida and Will as his parents. Now they're both out of the picture, and so the cleaning up of the house and the possessions and the setting things to rights has begun. So everyone has come together and, um, hi, oh, hi, thank you. We have Hal and his family up in the attic going through things. Dennis finds the wind up monkey toy and it was in a, a box that Hal first found the toy in himself back when he was a child back in his old house in Connecticut. So already that has freaked him out. Another thing that we find out is that he had thrown this toy down a well a long time ago. And it was a, an unused well, no one was using it anymore, it had dried up. His uncle had dug a new hole and all of the like, things around the well had grown up and obscured it. It's just, there. no one would have taken this thing out of the well and brought it to the house and, you know, especially in the same box. Hal is immediately worried because every time the monkey plays its little symbols, someone dies. And it doesn't have to be a person, but something has to die when, when that, when that um, symbol clanging happens. So Dennis tries to wind it and Hal's like, no, don't do that. And everyone's kind of like, what's wrong with you? You know, it's just a toy. So then we hear the backstory, which is the most interesting part of this entire short story. And we kind of start from the end and we hear about what the final straw was. One of Hal's childhood friends ends up dying. He falls off the ladder and he dies. And after that, knowing it was the monkey that did it, Hal throws it into the well. Quote, and now the monkey was gone. It was down the well, and one scruffy Manx cat with ear mites was not too great a price to pay. On page 167. So what had happened after he threw it into the well was it, it hit the ground, and then it clanged. So it clanged, and then Hal knew something else was going to die. It ended up being Aunt Ida's cat. So throughout this, our death toll is the first one to die after Hal found this toy was the babysitter that used to watch him and his brother, Beulah. Then Bill's friend, he was crossing the street with Bill and the kid got hit by a car and died. Then Hal had wound it up and their own mother died. Then Johnny McCabe, who was um, Hal's friend, and that's what made him throw it down the well. So not knowing for sure that the monkey is attached to people's deaths, Hal had hidden the monkey and put it back where he had found it. It had been something that was his father's and it was way back in a closet and no one knew what it was, why it was there. His father had run off and abandoned the family. So there was no explanation for this toy. Quote, Hal felt safe for a while. He even began to forget about the monkey again or to believe it had only been a bad dream. But when he came home from school on the afternoon his mother died, it was back on his shelf, symbols poised, grinning down at him. Page 179. And Hal is compelled, this toy compels him to wind it. Even though he knows he shouldn't, he knows that people have died 
due to this thing. And the, when Bill's friend died, Hal was worried that it was going to be Bill or his mother at that time. So he does think that someone that he knows and doesn't want to die is going to. And he still can't help himself. He still whines the toy. So his mom has a brain aneurysm at work and she dies. Someone comes over to tell the boys they're going to get shipped off to their aunt and uncle's house. Quote, there was the guilt, the certain deadly knowledge that he had killed his mother by winding the monkey up on that sunny after school afternoon. Page 181. So when Aunt Ida comes, she, you know, straightens all the affairs up and she takes the boys with her. Hal and Bill have to get rid of things. There's just no room for them to bring everything. So they kind of pile some stuff for donation or garbage and Hal watches the monkey get taken away. He watches it. Some guy loads it into a truck, goes down the street. Hal is relieved and overjoyed that this is finally out of his life. He doesn't have to worry about this anymore. So then they move to Maine with Aunt Ida and Uncle Will. She asks Hal to get some Christmas lights from the attic one day. And he goes up there and the monkey is there inside that same box that he originally found it in way back when. Somehow it has arrived. So this thing is stalking him and I love that aspect. Like, how did it get there? What happened to the guy who took it away? Um, it's implied that he, he died and then somehow the monkey traveled all the way, all the way to Maine. It's just, it's so delightfully creepy. So at this point, Hal is getting worried about the monkey killing one of his kids or his wife. I don't think he would be as upset about, but he really does not want his favorite son, Petey, to die. And Petey is uncomfortable. He doesn't like this toy. He senses that something is off about it. He, he wants to get rid of it. And Hal's like, yes, let's do that. So the two of them get a, like a duffel bag and weight it with rocks. And then they're going to go throw it into this lake by Aunt Ida and Uncle Will's house. So there's a whole element to this. It's a little cheesy. It's a little drawn out, but Hal ends up rowing to the middle of this lake where the deepest part of it is. And he's going to toss the monkey in there. There's a huge storm that kicks up and there's like a storm cloud in the shape of this monkey with symbols and there's just all this anger and rage directed at Hal and the waves get huge. His boat just literally falls apart around him after he has dumped this monkey and he almost doesn't make it back to shore. And that's it. He and Petey walk off and you're thinking, or at least I was thinking the first time I read this, something's got to happen. One of them has to die, you know, something. And you know, pretty much all that happens is there's an article to close the story saying that a massive amount of fish just inexplicably died. And we know it's because of the monkey and his symbols, but I don't know. It was, I feel like the story kind of petered out a little bit and it did have a cute little ending, you know, with the, with the, um, fish mass death thing. But I think, I think Stephen King could have done a little better, made it a little darker. Although Hal did have so much in his life, I guess, you know, it's only fair that he, he gets off this one time. So, I don't know. Let me know down below. This one and the Chattery Teeth, I love that one. You know, that's another wind-up toy that's, it shouldn't be scary, but it ends up giving you chills. So, I love when, when little ordinary objects like that turn out to be creepy and unsettling and they make good horror stories. Have a sweet day.